Hello, and welcome to Replay Value. So I've been watching Kuroko's basketball because I've been craving the idea that once this pandemic is over, I'll be able to actually play a sport with other humans again. And so I was going along wondering about how good the in-universe NBA must be if Japanese high schoolers are this skilled, and noticed that, unsurprisingly, the show follows a traditional story arc, where the team has a crushing loss about three quarters of the way through the first season to inspire conflict and change in the primary cast, such that they can grow as both people and players, but really just the last one in this case specifically. I usually call this moment the weight of defeat, where our characters resolve to improve and try again with a clear opponent to show how much they've grown. It's a super useful narrative tool, and I couldn't help but think of my personal favorite handling of the weight of defeat in the realm of sports anime, also made by Production IG, Haikus. Which, if you've been on this channel before for my Haiku content, is probably no surprise. One of my oldest videos is talking about the block at the end of the first season, which I need to remake for a whole host of reasons. <coughs> Pronunciation! But I'm waiting for a certain moment in the manga to be adapted before I go about doing so. Haikyuu's weight of defeat is not just a simple tournament exit, it is the designing principle that informs most of the second season from the skills that the players need to acquire, heightens the thematic rival in Oikawa and Seijo, raises the stakes regarding the seniors who only have the last season to perform, and inadvertently creates a lot of the internal conflict the team undergoes from Hinata's ace ambitions, Suki and Yamaguchi's relationship and roles, and of course the fight that leads to to the new freak quick. In other words, it's arguably the most important thing that happens in the entire storyline, and that is why Climber is my favorite high Q theme. Because it not only captures the weight of defeat's sadness, but also the triumph that follows, in addition to having an incredible song and plenty of symbolism and thematic meaning to accentuate its tonal cohesion to those aspects of high Q I find so intriguing. Obviously, a big part of why I enjoy this ED is because of the song. Climber by Galileo Galilei is able to balance the exciting rock instrumentation that you find in a lot of the opening themes, with a contemplative and soothing vocal track that at times feels like it'd be perfect with a melancholic piano melody. That dichotomy isn't lost in the visuals either. There are plenty of cool color palettes here, and it makes the climax of the song where the vocals and instrumentation unify in their tone affirming for the positive vibe of the ending. But it's a journey to that point, one that starts with callbacks to the weight of defeat. Literally, the moments from the first season where Hinata and Kageyama expressed their frustration in the gymnasium. But the images that sandwich those shots are Hinata biking, Kageyama practicing, and the two of them running, which shows how they have taken this defeat and are using it as motivation to improve. You can also see a similar vibe in Yamaguchi, notably looking disappointed by Suki's usual solemn self. His desire to have playing time and get better at the sport is contrasted with his best friend's ambivalence to that, which is a big part of this core's arc. One of the other core elements of this ED is the idea that this growth is not solely based around these two individuals. It's a team effort, and that's best represented by everyone running together. In fact, most of the characters are added to the group in their cohorts. Suki and Yamaguchi as a duo, the second and third years, the opening shot where the team is retaking the court, the entire support staff cheering on what appears to be a practice match, and of course, with the crows flying above the mountains. That mountainous imagery is present beyond more than just this moment, with the pan down to Hinata biking the hills between his home and the school, the ending image, which we'll get to in a moment, and the shot of the big opponents and rivals, friendly or otherwise. This might not seem like a mountain at first, but the pan up certainly ties into that ascendant structure of failing and then achieving. Given that it builds to a shadowy Ushijima from the base of Oikawa, the opponent who toppled them and who they'll have to overcome to even have a shot at Ushijima, along with a bunch of other opponents, from the training camp arc, who are also rivals to defeat, especially Nekoma, ties into that aspect of the theme. Even without the tie-in to the mountain imagery in my favorite Haikyuu opening, <laughs> where a snowy mountaintop across from a mountain already scaled by Kurasuno, that's Seijo by the way, transforms into Shiritorizawa's eagle and Ushijima specifically. That thematic unification is sweet, and while not present in this ED from the outset of its airing, elevated it for me upon my first ever viewing of the third season, since the mountain climbing imagery had been so saturated in this ED and helped to elevate the fifth OP. It's also a reminder of what exactly the achievement that the team is striving for looks like in this ED. There'll be yet another mountain to climb beyond that. 
Which brings us to the final section of the ED, and there's a lot of obvious imagery here. The junkyard being not only relevant because of the team's animal being the crows, and the battle of the junkyard as the literal embodiment of their rivalry with Nekoma, that connection being the reason they get to go to the training camp that comprises most of this core, and serving as a mountain to climb, both an immediate one in Nekoma at the training camp, but also in a future real match, as Hinata and Kenma agree to. There's the aspect of Hinata leading the team, he's the first one on the court, these are his shoes in the first shot, he breaks from the pack and leaps, Hinata is our protagonist, and he's also always pushing himself, and by extension, the team forward, and in that way serves as something of a pseudo-North Star for the team to guide themselves. He is, after all, the one they all look to as he becomes brighter and brighter approaching the sun. In the show, they talk about how they've put too much weight on the freak duo's shoulders and need to improve themselves. The embodiment of victory as the crow's feather, the great continuity of motion from that to the final shot with its awesome visual composition, this ED goes the full spectrum from crushing defeat to achievement so fluidly, and puts a sharp focus on expressing that it's the entire team's hard work that is a significant portion of that transition from failure to winning. The last bit I want to mention are the 10 crows at the beginning, because 10 is an important number in Q. It's the little giant's number, Hinata's, and it's also the number of players at the start of the series prior to Asahi and Noya's return to the squad. But frankly, that seems like a bit of a stretch, and it's probably just 10 because of that legacy element uniting Hinata and the little giant. I'd make the case that these two crows in the foreground are Kageyama and Hinata for that reason, and also because they're the main characters. And it's cool that it's present here because that's Hinata's initial motivation motivation for joining Karasuno and to play volleyball, and it's also why he has to bike to Karasuno High over these hills every day, so there's a cool unification there as well. And that's about everything I have to say about Climber, my favorite theme from Q, at least to this point, because god knows Production IG could always knock my socks off with the second core of the fourth season, especially since, well, we'll get there when we get there. And until then, thanks for watching.